My name is Waylon Pahona. I'm Hopi, Tewa, Maricopa Pipash. I'm enrolled member of the Gila River Tribe. We are raising funds for the New York Marathon. Um, every one of those four of us from the community who are raising funds, um, 3,500 to be exact for every one of us. So we're under a group called Native Strength Revolution, which is a tribal run uh, wellness, international wellness program that does certif certification, yoga, training, all that stuff. And they're sponsoring us. The only way other than to win the lottery to get into the New York Marathon is to be sponsored. And through that sponsoring, you have to raise money. So each of us has to raise 3,500. And part of this fundraiser today is gonna help, help us pay for that. My name is Jivik Sikh and I live in Hashinkuk, Hilo River. So I'm Akimarotam, I'm also Tonotam, my dad's side. And also my dad's side, I'm, uh, they say Kawaika or Laguna. Hmm, marathons are short. Hey. Uh, so I've done a lot of running in the community. Started out with smaller runs, 10K, half marathon, marathon. Then we got up to ultras and also Waylon and uh, all, well, all four of us now uh, have done the longer runs, the, the harder runs in Hopi. So we've done a lot of different types of running and not only that, but spiritual running. So I'm also part of the group that goes from Hilo River to the ocean. So that one's 570. So yep, marathons are tiny to us autumn. Hello, my name is Molly Chikpaak. I'm a member of the Thon Autumn Nation and Akuma Autumn. Uh, my inspiration is others. Caring prayers um, during my incarceration, running found me again and it helped me clear my mind, um, stay focused, stay out of trouble. It's, it's therapy, it's therapy for me. So back in the day, about seven years ago, I've done a lot of ultra marathon running. Um, I had uh, some knee surgeries on both my knees. And so for seven years, I haven't ran. And um, I recently started to come back to running. So what inspires me to run is just who we are as indigenous people. You know, me being Hopi, Tewa, Maricopa, Pipash, you know, throughout the history of who we are, We've all been runners, you know, and it's interesting when people say, I don't run, I don't run, but people don't understand that it's been in our DNA for thousands of years of who we are um, as these people. And so I run to remind myself of who I am, you know, from my Hopi side from, and to my Gila River side. Of, um, that's one of the reasons why I run. I don't think there's a fig physical preparation. There's a mental, uh, a mental preparation for something like this. It's creating this conscious awareness to the mind and having this um, manifestation of why you're doing what you do. When you create something in the mind, then the physical body takes over. When you can think of it in that way, it's changed from not being something that's a chore or it's not nothing physical. When you create a mindset to do these types of things, then you're able to run. So how I've prepared myself is visualization, um, seeing myself running in the New York Marathon, um, visually seeing people and not necessarily paying attention to the miles that I need to run, but having this conscious awareness of what needs to happen. So last year, what I did is I got on YouTube and there's videos of the whole route of New York Marathon and watch the videos, talk to people who've done it before and got ready. So that's my big thing is I have to picture it in my mind Okay, 20 miles, this is where I'm gonna start wanting to tap out. What am I gonna do there? Is that a big big hill there or, or is it downhill or what? So those kind of things. It's a mental game and you just have to push through it. You have to push through it and know that you're doing it for a cause, for people. Um, and then it goes by. I don't even know how to explain it. If you're a runner, like, accomplishing something or you set a goal right and you you complete it it just feels good and knowing that you're helping your body helping people um i run for other people right i said carrying those prayers um 
it's just the energy. It feels, I don't know how to explain it. This feels really good once you cross it and you know you've done it again. My goal is to finish. <laughs> um, I don't really have a set time. I know last year, well, when you do the run, you have to predict your time to get in a shoot, like say 10 minutes per mile, 11 minutes per mile. So what they do is they'll put the faster people in the front and the, the rest of us in the back. Uh, and so I, I usually put like 12 is average, I guess. Um, but the good thing this year is uh, my wife Isabel is going. We're gonna run together. So I don't have a, a race time like last year. You know, last year I was first out of the group. Uh, and now I'm gonna let Waylon probably do it. <laughs> just this one time. Uh, but yeah, we, I just want to enjoy it and, and, you know, how we do, which is pray and bless the land wherever we're at. And that's the main part. So I don't really have a set time. My goal for completing the marathon is to raise funds for Native Strength Revolution. To see that community um, in numbers, it, it, we're very powerful. So it's more of a connection of everything that we're doing, the reach that we're, 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 we're getting more people to get involved with these types of things. So my goal is to get people to understand the strength and, of community. We are running to acknowledge the people who once occupied the boroughs, uh, Manhattan, Staten Island, uh, the Bronx, you know, before those places were named, indigenous people occupied the land there. And so we're also running not only to raise the funds, but to uh, give information of these are the people who lived here first. Um, we're also wearing shirts that have um, all the indigenous tribes that lived in the area. Uh, education for me to read and, and learn about the tribes and, and understand that some of them were located to Oklahoma, you know, some were displaced and, and pretty much disbanded where there's not even a, a huge percentage of the people that are left. So that's kind of what I've learned from um, learning about the people who occupied uh, that area. The, there are some people who right now it's a big deal to do things like land acknowledgement and keep talking about the trauma of history. And I know through counseling, which is what I do, uh, it has its place. And so what I can say is that when I go there, I know that I respect the place, no matter if there's all these buildings. Uh, you, you'll, if you're into it, you'll get a feel for a certain spot. Like, oh man, something rough happened here, or this is, has, was a place where they prayed a lot. Even if there's a building there, you know. For me, it, it's not so much running there and saying this is tribal land you know because on a spiritual side it, it we we can't really continue that stuff you know um i don't know how to explain it it's 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 like uh it's like a, a person learning tribal history for the first time and getting angry about it but sooner or later you have to do some work with that to create goodness and that's where I'm at just to be able to do this like really it's an honor like you know it's just carrying prayers for everybody that's here at home you know the ones that are sick and to have that responsibility it's like I said it's pressure but it's an honor at the same time like I'm able to you get to like not many people get chances like that, you know, especially coming from the res, like we're pretty much isolated and told no or can't. And to know that your community and other people are willing to help you and just asking in general, like asking for help. This is the, the, the most interesting part because uh, a lot of the people who are helping us I don't know on a name, a first name basis. I, I don't, I see them. And so for all of these elders, and um, it looks like a lot of grandchildren are also here to help. 
Um, it's been very impactful and amazing to see them come and support um, the four of us because I've, um, it's just a very community-based type uh, fundraiser. And so it's very inspiring. Hi, my name is Joyce Ariza. I'm here helping, helping the organization to donate, to raise money. And I'm happy to be here and help because times everybody needs a help and it's a big opportunity to chip in together and help each other. Especially the way the world's going, you know, just it's getting really crazy and we need all help from everybody, you know, to join in because one, two people can't do it alone. It's too much work. So I'm more than happy to help and I talk with the ladies and meet friends I didn't know. And it's a very nice organization because without us helping, they wouldn't be able to go where they need to go in the marathon. So I just wanted to say thank you everybody out there who donated and has come and buy, bought fry bread from us because we really appreciate it and I know they appreciate it too because we, like I said, we need all the help we can. So thank you and God bless. My name is Deborah Adame. I'm with the Gila River Tribe from District 5. I am also part of the Grick Urban Member Association, uh, the elders here helping with the fundraiser. I think it's great. It's probably the best one we've had so far. We've got a lot of support uh, with Facebook, um, word of mouth, and actually a lot of repeat customers have come back when they find out that we're doing the fun bread, uh, fried bread raising for the, the runners. Our goal is to inform people why we're having the fundraiser. I think it's important that we know, that they know that the funds are gonna go to help um, Native American that want to go run it and the New York City uh, Marathon. And also to give them information regarding if it's here at this organization, as well as just kind of a group community effort um, to let them know, hey, we're here every once in a while having fundraisers for good causes. And we as a group try to do whatever we can to support causes, any causes. Um, we're very close with Warriors Code. Um, we're very close to the runners as well. And I think it's important that we can teach, you know, the younger generation what it means to be a community. And that starts from making fried bread in the back and showing them how to make it. We've had demonstrations inside the building on how to make fried bread, as well as, you know, my grandchildren out here helping out, teaching them, this is what we do with the community. You know, teaching them to donate their time, donate their efforts, and just to get to meet new people and make connections within the community. I would like to say to Jivik, Isabel, Molly, and Waylon, thank you so much for taking this challenge. I know it's not easy. I know that the training is long and difficult, but congratulations to you to commit to run this marathon and to represent, definitely represent. Good luck, and I know that they'll do well. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Warriors Code, the UMA, the Urban Members Association, um, the elders who are here today um, to help us raise this, these funds. Thank you.